Yo, what it do guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be looking at Operation Scarlet Spear, and to understand it, break it down, what is what, and so forth. So let's get straight into it. So what is Scarlet Spear? It is a battle of the new war. The new war has begun, not so much just with this, but it'll be a continuation of multiple things. However, the Scarlet Spear is split between ground groups and space groups, and they will be linked together to help one another. So the ground team is going to be versus the Chondrix, and the space team is going to be versus the Murex. The way that this works is the ground team wants to gather and download kill codes from the Chondrix to send up to the space team. This then will be uploaded from the space team uh, in towards the Murex to drive them away and this is all connected via an op link. Scarlet Spear Relay can actually be found on Earth, so if you are looking to go and get here you can find the relay there and there are going to be multiple instances. All of the instances, uh, when started afresh, will actually count down from three hours. So there's none of them that are in different times. They're all linked. Everything goes from three hours, counting down to zero. Uh, and then repeat. Uh, the relay instance ends when either the Murex Driven Away reaches 100 out of 100, or if the time runs out. So the idea is you want to try and push back the Murex as fast as possible, uh, and you will also go and receive a victory bonus on this part, which I'll explain about later. Uh, you can uh, see the ground squads and uh, the space squads from the interface inside the relay. So just get familiar with everything inside the relay as you're walking around. You can have a little look at everything. But to start off with, you want to go ahead and talk to Little Duck. And you want to go ahead and purchase an op link. And this is for 1,000 normal credits. Now, I call them normal credits because we know credits within Warframe as just normal currency. But the, throughout this operation, you will also go and get rewarded Scarlet credits. So normal credits, Scarlet credits. Uh, a, just get familiar with those uh, words. Uh, the op link will automatically be inside your gear when you have purchased it. So you don't need to go in towards your gear and sort it all out. This is where you will find your op link because you will get very familiar with this regardless if you're doing the chondrix on the ground or you're doing the murex in the sky and the space so you could do this solo or you can do this with a squad but for purposes we will look into the squad gameplay mostly so let's start looking in towards the ground team first and the chondrix so the chondrix gameplay when you load in head to the first chondrix uh, it will be a rinse and repeat system kill the chondrix by shooting the ball inside and then kill any sentience that spawn You'll need to do this a multiple of three times. So kill the Chondrix, uh, kill the Senians. Chondrix, Senians, Chondrix, Senians. Uh, until you are ready to use your OP link for scanning. So once the third lot of Senians have been wiped out, a little duck will tell you to go to put the OP link down. Once you go ahead and place this down, for every 33, so it's going to be in thirds, for every 33% scanned, you get one kill code. And this will be for a maximum of three kill codes per Chondrix, okay? So, if you are in a group, the more OP links that you have down, the faster the scan becomes. So, this is more efficiency. The OP links have a health bar. If all of them are destroyed, then your group will end your run. So, please go ahead and keep your OP links alive. Pay attention. Once you have successfully scanned 100% of a Chondrix, you have defeated it. You can do a maximum of 17 Chondrixes in a run before being recalled to the extract from the mission. Your score for each Chondrix is displayed on the screen, and this will scale per Chondrix you do in the run. Your score also means the amount of Scarlet credits you will get back from the run as well. With Scarlet credits, this is a reward currency that you'll be traded in towards Little Duck for particular rewards, as new weapons, arcanes, and so forth. So this is pretty much the fight against the Chondrix. However, I'm going to quickly share some tips and meta Warframes, weapons and builds people are currently running and the ones that I have found most success in. So let's start off with the OP Link protection. Use Limbo to protect the OP Links and your team. His Cataclysm is extremely useful. So if you do not own a Limbo, then you can use things like Frost or even Gara, as they both offer protection for the Links and for your team. Use Mesa to clear out the horde of enemies. She will easily handle Grinier and Sentience. Mod her for Peacemakers, um, and you will see builds throughout all of this on the screen, but she will take care of all of the wave clearing. Now, when it comes to the Chondrix, use Mirage for damage dealing. Her buffing, buffing abilities allow for a bigger damage hitting against the Chondrix. So if you do not own a Mirage, then any frame that can buff weapon output is fine. For example, Rhino and his Roar. 
Chroma and his Vex armor, Ivara and her navigator, and so forth and so forth. Now keep in mind if you are playing Mirage, that Earth can also have nighttime. So if you are playing Mirage in the nighttime, you are not going to go and receive your day buff. There's a few ways around that, but you're not going to go and receive your day buff, okay? So at that point, play Rhino. As for the final Warframe inside a squad, so you've got Limbo for protection, Mesa for wave clearing, and Mirage go ahead and shoot the Chondrix. Uh, as for the final Warframe, I recommend at this point maybe another damage dealer. So we had more success in basically taking two buff frames that would go ahead and take on the Chondrix, one frame that would clear out any enemies, and then another frame to go ahead and protect the OP links and our team. So feel free to go and use another Mirage, another Rhino, whatever. Some people like to use going. Some people like to go and use Octavias, some people like to use Wisps for buffing, so it's completely fine. Now for the weapons, I recommend critical weapons with Corrosive Elemental. Uh, this is because the Chondrix actually has Ferrite armor, and this is also because there's plenty of Grenier around, so there's more and more reason to go for Corrosive uh, Elementals. So there are plenty of critical weapons to choose from. However, because there's so many, I'm just going to put a couple on the screen right now. Uh, primary, secondaries, and melees that you can use as a form of attacking the Chondrix. Believe me when I say this, there's a lot that you can go ahead and pick for. And not everybody's going to have the weapons that I put up there anyways. So you want to mod your weapons for critical and elemental. So the more base critical that a weapon has, that's more of the go-to pick that you want to go ahead and use. Okay? A Plague Krippif uh, with Exodia Contagion or a Redeemer Prime are one of the most common go-tos for destroying the Chondrix faster. Uh, don't forget about companions helping out with buffs like Adaza and her Cat's Eye, Smita and her Charm, or even Helios with his Destructor. Um, yeah, even with his Destructor and the Gladiator set uh, bonus. I might have got Destructor wrong, I forgot the name of it. Uh, anyways, uh, Arcanes like Fury, Avenger, and Arachne also help out damage from melee weapons. However, if you are using primary weapons, consider things like Rage and so forth, or even Precision for your um, pistols. Uh, do go and keep in mind, you will not proc Arcanes on the Chondrix, so you want to go ahead and shoot enemies first if you do want to then go to proc on towards the Chondrix. Also, for a Focus School, Madurai is going to do very well in here, and yes, you can use Void Strike Charges from Madurai. For anybody who understands what I'm talking about at that point, you will understand. If you don't understand, you can always refer to my Focus uh, Guides that I have uploaded recently, and you can understand what Void Strike is and what Void Strike does. But you can always go and use Void Strike. Plague... Uh, uh, Exodia Contagion does not consume Void Strike Charges, so keep that in mind. Now, that's pretty much it for the Chondrix, and the Chondrix is probably the bigger and more mechanical of the fights, but I use that loosely. Let's go and have a little look at the Murex. So this is the space gameplay. When loaded in, drive your Railjack to the market... Uh, sorry, drive your Railjack to the marker in front of the Murex ship. This will place down your OP Link satellite. You do not have to protect the satellite, you can just leave it there. Now that you've placed your satellite down, get out of your Railjack and head inside the Murex ship. When inside, head over to the marker that, uh, that is located and place down your OP link. From here on, all you need to do is protect the OP links as they upload codes to drive away the Murex. Now you only need 9 codes to drive away the Murex. And you can drive, uh, you could drive away up to a maximum of five Murexes in one run before needing to be recalled back and extract from your mission. That is pretty much it for the Murex. It requires the ground team to be doing a good job with their kill codes for you guys to continue uploading. So let's hope that you get some good teams on the ground so that you in the air can go to continue uploading at a good rate. Keep in mind, again, the links also scale, so the more people are going to put links down, the faster that these uploads will take. Uh, one meta to consider is to drive your Railjack away from combat. The enemy scales a lot in space, and it gets really hard. They also scale a lot on the Chondrix and on the floor as well, but in space, it gets really hard. Railjack is new, and it does not have a lot of modding for them to be able to handle enemies at such a high level efficiently. So it's best to go and keep yourself uh, alive. So we drive our Railjack really far away from the combat so we don't go ahead and get attacked and uh, keep our Railjack cloaked, things like that. As for weapons, um, as for weapons, the Paracesis is a good option dealing against the Sentience. However, again, critical weapons are pretty much the go-to options for here. So any critical weapons that you've got, you can go ahead and throw them in there. But keep in mind the Paracesis and its uh, 
passive capabilities are very good for dealing against sentience. As for Warframes, Limbo is pretty much meta here again. Uh, protect your links and keep everybody safe. Uh, I echo what I said earlier, Frost, Gara, anybody else can go ahead and protect a team and protect the links are safe. In case you are wondering, can you heal the links? No, you cannot. Um, I think there might be a way for Venery to, uh, Korra's Venery, Korra's Kavat to actually heal the links, but you can also go ahead and get your links healed from people inside the relay. There are two consoles that people can go ahead and click on and they can see if your links are damaged or not. Um, do not be afraid to actually go ahead and help other people's links and heal them out from these consoles, but it will cost you 75,000 normal credits so there's a lot of credits to go ahead and spend uh if you don't have that kind of money then don't help out it's okay look after you just look after yourself now there are bonuses to go ahead and get in terms of scarlet credits the current system for them is that whatever score you have on the ground and in space add those scores together then times it by two that will be your bonus Scarlet Credits if the relay you are in reaches 100 out of 100 Murex driven away before the timer ends. You will get a bonus in your inbox, and you cannot get any higher than a bonus of 10,000 Scarlet Credits. So if you reach a score of 5,000 combined between ground and space, or just ground on its own, or just space on its own, then you should, and I use the word should, receive a maximum bonus payout. But again, this is only if the Murex is 100 out of 100 before the timer ends. Now, there are some issues with this system at the moment, and not a lot of people are getting their bonuses. I'm not too sure what's going to go on. They did change it previously, so they may change it again. But I figured I'd go ahead and throw this in here for those who are panicking about the return rate that you're getting. So basically, if you want to understand that, the more time that you spend in a relay with squads, and the more time that you spend uh, fighting within that relay, uh, the more return you'll get in terms of bonuses. Um, also, if your relay happens to reach 100 out of 100 uh, before the timer ends, don't just wait around. Go join another relay. You can get multiple bonuses from multiple relays. So keep that in mind, okay? Besides from that, I feel like I've covered majority of everything. Uh, I should have had all of the builds and everything else up on the screen. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I kept it as short and sweet as possible. If you do have any questions, you can always go and catch me live on twitch.tv forward slash no sympathy. Um, and I'm doing this for the next couple of days. So if you've got any questions, let me know. But outside of that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a rating, please. I'd appreciate it. Let me know how well I did. If I did miss anything or if you think there's anything I can improve on or if you feel like there's anything that should be added in here, um, please go and leave a comment down below. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys again in the next video. Peace. <laughs>